Hey friends, welcome back. And this is a nuclear fuel bundle. It's nuclear fuel that goes right into the heart of a nuclear power reactor. Yes, this is how nuclear fuel looks like. It's not a liquid, it's not in, held in barrels of goop coming out, but rather it's a solid. A single bundle like this one lasts around 18 months in a nuclear power reactor, and that's on average. So it really depends on where you place it in the reactor, but on average, it's around 18 months. And you might be asking, how much electricity can this one bundle produce? Well, if you're considering for an average Canadian, which an average Canadian consumes a lot of electricity, top four consumers of electricity across the world per capita. And this one bundle would provide around 520 years worth of electricity for an average Canadian. Yes. So this thing is very, very powerful. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering. And on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. Okay, so what about an average person's lifetime's worth of electricity? How much nuclear waste would be produced if we were to compare that to that of a can of soda? Here is a can of soda. Yes, this video is not being sponsored by Nestle, but a little bit of iced tea doesn't hurt anyone. So 355 milliliters of liquid are inside of this soda can. So the question is how many soda cans would fit into this bundle? And that is around equal to 12 soda cans. So it would take 12 of these soda cans, standard 355 milliliter size, to fit an entire fuel bundle. All right, so that's not a lot of nuclear waste. So if you do the math, one of these soda cans can provide your entire lifetime worth of electricity. All right, and so remember, these fuel bundles, once they're ejected from a nuclear reactor, although they're called waste, they're not necessarily waste sources yet because there's still a lot of energy jam-packed inside of these bundles, which can be used in future generations of nuclear reactors. This fuel bundle has around 100 times the amount of energy still remaining inside of it than was removed from the nuclear power reactor, which are currently, the generation of reactors are called thermal reactors, which are using up this fuel. So this fuel still has has 100 times the amount of energy that's already been removed, which means that this nuclear waste is actually a resource which could be used for future generations. All right, so let's jump into why used fuel nuclear disposal is safe. All right, so a lot of folks in the world may make the point that although your lifetime worth of nuclear waste may fit into that of a soda can, there may be 8 billion soda cans by the time everyone in the population has passed on and the new generations have come. So what about that? Where would these 8 billion soda cans go in the world? Well, good news, there are solutions and there are permanent solutions to disposing this nuclear waste. It's called a DGR or Deep Geological Repository. You take spent nuclear fuel, you don't store it in soda cans, rather it's stored inside copper coated containers, canisters, which are jam-packed with these fuel bundles. Next, you go around half a kilometer underground, depending on where it's placed, and you place that waste in bentonite clay. And remember, location is key right? All places in the world aren't the best to dispose of nuclear waste, but you would select an area which is deep enough where water movement is as small as possible. Number two, the geological makeup of that area must have rocks which are non-permeable, which reduces the water flow even more. Also, geologists, scientists, engineers, they do analysis on that area to make sure that this area has been seismically stable for thousands, if not millions of years. This makes sure that this area is known to have very less seismic activity, aka no earthquakes. Also analysis of how long this waste can stay safely in that area. So you're doing studies on climate change and how that area may be impacted by increases in temperature or decreases in temperature. Also, you're doing studies on whether glaciation may impact the area because as you know, ice ages are cyclical. So they're coming and going and this repository that's made may be covered by entire glacier. So you gotta engineer those canisters repository to make sure it can handle all of these situations. You're engineering, but rather than engineering a bridge withstand the next 50 to 100 years, you're engineering a repository which can survive hundreds of thousands to millions of years. Yes, it's an engineering challenge and humans, we can do it. There are solutions and they're being implemented right now. You go across the world, countries like Sweden and Finland, you can see for yourself, these solutions are being applied right now. Now the question is how radioactive is this bundle? Now, if you look at an entire fuel bundle that's spent, that comes out of a nuclear reactor, spends 10 years fuel pool, spent fuel bay, and is taken out around 160 grams worth of that fuel, equivalent size to that of a nine volt battery would be highly radioactive waste. Also the most radioactive substances coming out of the a fuel bundle out of a nuclear reactor is the element plutonium. And what's really interesting is that number one, plutonium
plutonium can be reprocessed and reused in future generation reactors. It's an amazing fuel source. But also, if you compare plutonium to that of caffeine gram per gram, caffeine is actually more toxic than that of plutonium. Yeah, so nuclear fuel actually loses toxicity over time, whereas there are certain toxic substances that are naturally occurring, like mercury, arsenic, that never lose their toxicity over time. Just a fun fact as well. Also, nuclear waste isn't as dangerous as you may think because there are many non-radioactive substances across the world, like the example that I gave, that are extremely toxic and don't lose their toxicity over time, like lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and these are found in everyday household items, right? For example, in car exhausts, you find them in PVC solar cells, you find them in pesticides. So, you know, it just goes to show that radioactive waste in comparison to many other natural elements is not as dangerous as we think. Lastly, it's all about risk, risk reduction. So when it comes to nuclear waste, a lot of people fear that it's a very risky thing that's out there. We don't have permanent disposal solutions right now, which is wrong, we do. Overall, it's all about risk perception and radioactive waste is not an exception, right? The amount of radioactive waste in the world that's out there and the amount of nuclear power we're gonna need to combat climate change, the risk is very insignificant as compared to the risk that we have burning fossil fuels, whether it be through our car exhausts, whether it be to produce electricity or manufacturing our goods is actually much more risky to our planet as it's jeopardizing the lives of billions and billions of people. Now, I'm not comparing climate change to that of radioactive waste disposal because those things cannot even be compared. You know, when it comes to nuclear waste disposal, it is scientifically backed up. There's a lot of studies, a lot of investigation that takes place a lot of analysis and research that goes into nuclear fuel. And this research is being done by engineers, scientists, and are being implemented at the moment. Overall, I'm trying to paint a picture to show you that the risks of disposing spent nuclear fuel is very minute and minuscule as compared to that of climate change. We need practical solutions, pragmatic solutions that can help our species survive and nuclear power must be incorporated as a solution. So another question that I get usually is, what about rising electricity consumption across the world? Have you considered that? Well, it's true. Electricity consumption per capita per person across the world is rising, especially with the quality of life increases and the demands of technology, right? Technology is accessible and it's providing people opportunities. It's increasing people's quality of life. There are many other industries across the world as well, which are electrifying to decrease greenhouse gas emissions and increase the efficiency of how we use our resources. So transportation industry is electrifying and many other industries across the world are on that same path. So the question is, will the lifetime electricity in our lifetime and that of nuclear waste still fit in, into the size of a soda can? Simply a question for now or for that of a future as well. Or is this just a temporary trend? Well, the answer is no, it's not a temporary trend. Remember right now, most of the world's reactors in the world, which are producing 10% of the world's electricity are thermal reactors. This is generation two or generation three plus reactor designs. And this also includes generation four technologies, which are upcoming. So this may be integrated into large nuclear reactors or small nuclear reactors. However, gen four reactor technologies, many of them run on the fast spectrum. This means you can use nuclear waste to power these future generation of nuclear reactors. So the answer is no. Although nuclear waste in our lifetime may fit into the side of soda can, future generation of nuclear reactors may actually reduce that nuclear waste that's being produced in the entire life cycle of nuclear power reactors. So ultimately you're using nuclear waste from thermal reactors and you're using this spent fuel inside of that of generation four fast reactors. Remember spent nuclear fuel isn't necessarily fully spent. There's a lot of energy still trapped inside of it. And there's a lot of countries across the world which reprocess these fuels, whether it be MOX, so mixed oxide fuels, you remove plutonium and many of the fissionable elements inside a fuel bundle and you reprocess them into MOX, mixed oxide fuels, or there's other reactors like the CANDU, the Canadian Deuterium Nuclear Reactor, which can directly use spent fuel from one of the most popular nuclear power reactor types in the world called the PWR, the pressurized water reactor. Yes, you take that fuel, you directly insert it into a can-do and it's used as almost like fresh fuel, right? It's actually forms better than fresh fuel inside of a can-do, right? So there's a lot of options out there right now for how spent fuel can be used in current generation of nuclear reactors. Nuclear waste is very versatile. It's an incredible resource which can be utilized in different ways and in different areas. So ultimately, what is the case for nuclear power? Well, throughout the decades and centuries, nuclear power technologies will play a very important role in minimizing the amount of fossil fuels that are burnt to produce electricity. This will mitigate the impact and damage that is being caused by that of fossil fuels burning and ultimately 
causing climate change. Remember, management of nuclear waste is a lot easier as compared to management of climate change. Reversing the damage that is being caused by climate change, it's very, very difficult. It can affect the lives of millions across the world. Ultimately, I think this soda can worth of nuclear waste speaks volumes to the positive impact that nuclear power is providing to humans across the world and also will provide for humans for centuries to come. It's a power resource which doesn't require a lot of resources. And ultimately, management of those resources is very easy and practical as compared to that of climate change and reversing the damage that climate change may cause. So hope you enjoyed this video, a sneak peek into nuclear waste and that of nuclear fuel, right? Why it's an incredible resource and why I think it's gonna play a really important role in fighting climate change in the future. So hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, take care, bye.